Welcome to an episode of Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time. This is part 17, and in this one I'm starting the rebuild of possibly the worst S50 steam engine I've ever seen. It's part of a steam plant which has a generator and a Bassett low boiler, and the boiler and generator are not in bad condition. Today is the 9th of July 2023. Yesterday I was over in West Yorkshire at the birthday party of my beautiful one-year-old granddaughter. Hence I was not able to make a video, and when I can't make a video, that's the time I normally put these top tip compilations on. I try and make a video almost every day, but it is getting increasingly difficult for a few reasons. Because of the cost of living crisis, my Patreon numbers have dropped and the revenue from the videos is not so good, so I'm having to do other things just to get by. Music is my first passion, and at the moment I'm doing quite a lot of work in my recording studio. Please enjoy this top tip time video. Over the years, I've repaired and rebuilt many model steam engines, and I think this one is possibly the worst I've ever seen. The cylinder's loose, but that's fairly common with S50 model engines. The initial problem that I'm looking at is the fact that the flywheel only turns half a revolution, and the piston locks up at each end of the stroke. Everything about this engine is horrible. It's quite an old S50, I can see that. I can't see very much for all the filth that covers the engine, the old oil and dust and grime, so I think the first thing to do is going to be to clean it up. That is, after I've chopped off the steam inlet pipe, I don't want this, it's horrible. Before I start, I'm using my vacuum cleaner to vacuum up some of the debris around the engine. And I notice what seems to be a clack valve ball. I don't know where that came from, but the vacuum cleaner's taken care of it anyway. In this clip, I'm removing the overscale elbow. This is far too big, miles over scale. The exhaust pipe is just a piece of threaded copper tubing, and in this clip I'm removing it from the cylinder. For the initial clean-up, just to see what's under there, I'm using my electric toothbrush. But it's not a good idea to use it dry, because it's going to scatter any dust everywhere all over the place. To stop this dust from flying about all over the workbench, I'm spraying the engine with some WD-40, and then it's back to the toothbrush. This toothbrush idea is not my original idea. It was sent in to me by one of my patron supporters by the name of Marek. I've used an ordinary toothbrush for cleaning models for many years, but by using an electric toothbrush, it removes the grime much quicker. Here's a top tip. If you're going to use an electric toothbrush for cleaning an engine like this, at least obtain a replacement brush head if you want to clean your teeth with it afterwards. Now I've cleaned up the engine a little bit, I can see the slots in the wood screws that hold the engine to the baseboard, so it's time to remove the engine from the baseboard. S50 engines have one mounting lug at one end and two at the other end. Once I've removed this last screw, the engine will be detached from the baseboard. This is the dynamo that's driven by the engine, and it's quite interesting because it's just a big lump of metal with a commercial electric motor in the centre. It's a permanent magnet electric motor, so as you rotate it, it will also generate power. As this series progresses, please refer back to this episode to see what I had to start with. This steam plant was partially dismantled, so there's a box full of bits. This, of course, is the baseboard I've just put back in there. I'll just go through some of the parts. This is the rear boiler support, again, a very thick piece of cast iron. This is the other side plate and everything's in very good condition. It's a bit rusty and horrible, but it's not broken. And here's the boiler. This is a Bassett Loke boiler, and Bassett Loke boilers were very good. And it's a Babcock type, with water tubes underneath. I've put the engine in a plastic tub, and I'm currently pouring cellulose thinners into the plastic tub and all over the engine. And just in case you don't know, cellulose thinners is known as lacquer thinner in the USA. Usual health and safety warning, when using solvents, always use them in a very well ventilated area. My workbench is next to a wide open door. And this door leads to the outer part of the workshop, which is right next to a fully wide open garage door. When I first tried out this electric toothbrush idea, I wasn't sure whether it was going to work but I wasn't using any solvent. You definitely need some kind of a lubricant. If you use it dry, 
All it does is spreads the grease and grime over a different area of the model. And as I've mentioned before, if you're going to buy one of these electric toothbrushes, buy a more expensive rechargeable one, because the batteries don't last very long. This is the rusty flywheel and most of the paint seems to have gone anyway, but I'm going to put this in the tub with the engine. And now in the outer part of the workshop I'm going to leave this for 24 hours, and I'm using another tub as a lid to stop it from evaporating. And the next day, it's time to clean it up. It's been in the cellulose thinners for 24 hours, so all the grease, grime and paint is very loose, and it's coming off beautifully with this toothbrush. Once again, I've speeded up the video because it's a very slow, tedious job, is this really? I don't like the look of the marks on this clack valve because it looks like it's been hit many times with a spanner, which is what you do when the clack valve either sticks or leaks. As you can see in this clip, the boiler has a brand new safety valve, always a good idea, the old one was well past its best. And as is usual with old Bassett Loke steam taps, this one's a bit bent. And this is a quick common sense warning not to hit the tap while it's in the boiler. Here's a close up view, you can see how much off centre it is. And here's a shot of it in the lathe chuck, and as I rotate the chuck you can see just how wobbly it really is. So I'm going to tap it back into position, but not like this. This obviously does move it, but it's not the best way to do it. Before I do the job properly, here's a health and safety warning. Be very careful. For a couple of obvious reasons, and don't use the copper side of the hammer, use the hide side of the hammer. The couple of reasons are, if you miss the part and hit the chuck, then the chuck might throw the hammer at you, which is not a good idea. I've done a lot of this, so I'm well practiced in the art of straightening things that are not straight by putting them in the chuck and hitting them with a soft hammer. Before any experts write in, I'm doing it wrong for the video. And here, as you can see, nothing much is happening. I'm hitting it a lot of times in the wrong place. Don't hit it from above, because you'll put too much pressure on the piece of work. One could, I suppose, use a dial test indicator, and then you would get it deathly accurate. But that's not really required for this application. The best way to do it is to tap it from underneath the centre, very gently until it straightens. It's best to practice on a piece of scrap metal before you do it on a part that you need to keep. This is straight enough for the application. Now it's time to remove the old gland packing from the nut and loosely reassemble the valve. I'll be polishing this valve up and fitting it with some new gland packing in the fullness of time. Some viewers may have noticed that I have an action man hanging from the shelf. So why is that? It's not the fact that when I was a child I didn't have an action man, I just had an action man deserter. It's because I use this action man to calculate scales on some of the models that I build. I stand him next to a model, providing the model is the same scale as action man, to just see that everything marries up. And just for convenience, so I know where he is, I hang him from the shelf. And that's it for this one, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.